YouTube. This is a quick comparison overview of the new Canon XF400 and the Panasonic HCX1. They are both 4K cameras and I was thinking that this would be a fair comparison just because price point wise they are almost identical. The new Canon here is $29 99 so basically 3000 and the Panasonic HCX1 is 3200 if I remember right so I literally just unboxed this this is the XF400 just got released last week and again I apologize for the noises that's Miss Brandy eating her dinner and doing her thing but you know my initial impressions with this camera just taking it out of the box is it, it's small which I knew but I kind of believe this almost feels like an XA update rather than an XF series update I did own the XF 200 and there were a lot more physical buttons on it that you just don't have on this you know just unpacking it out of the box I noticed that there was just little things that kind of make you think for example like Panasonic decided to include a battery charger I didn't see that in the box here unless I missed it but just something simple like that in the price point where to charge the battery on the Canon you have to have the battery in the camera and charge it through there with a plug in like the DC uh, port on the camera not a big deal but I don't normally charge my cameras like that where the Panasonic actually came with a uh, actual charger for the the battery to plug in the wall and you don't have to charge the battery inside the camera so just something simple like that stood out right away unboxing it and just the lack of physical buttons on the Canon. I mean, if we just take a quick glance here at the Panasonic, there are a ton of assignable buttons and physical buttons and knobs on the side where the Canon, you have here for your ND filters, and there's a custom button here where you could do um, your knob where you can control some things. And then really, that's it on the side. I mean, when you open it up, you have your infrared and a couple little things there, but it's nothing like the Panasonic where there are buttons just all over the place. So, with that being said, this is just going to be kind of a quick overview and comparison between the two models. Again, again because they are priced similarly and they are both 4K 60p cameras. So let's get started. Okay, so one of the first things you will definitely notice is just the sheer size of the Canon XF400 compared to the Panasonic HCX1. I mean, it's the, the, the Panasonic is so much bigger than the Canon, it's not even funny. Weight wise, I'm sure it's probably almost double the weight as well, but Let's just look at build quality for a second because a couple things that I liked about the Panasonic over the Canon like right away, let me move this out of the way, is on here Panasonic decided to put like a textured grip. You see it here, you see along here if you were to bump it or I guess if you dropped it you, you feel like it would be more sturdy. Where on the Canon, you don't have any of those things. Now, I'm not saying the Canon feels cheap. The JVC, it was it the HM170 4K camera I had a, a couple a year or so ago, that felt cheap. This does not feel hollow. The plastics, it does feel solid. But just little touches like that, you can tell that Panasonic went the extra yard. Um, some people have complained that like you see here on the Panasonic you got your focus zoom iris rings where on the Canon they went down from three rings on the XF200 down to just one. Now 
if I'm being perfectly honest, that has that doesn't really bother me just because when I'm I, I've never used one of my rings for zoom. I've always liked the zoom rocker. Like, uh, like here, these, uh, you can see, these zoom rockers, I've always liked those. So the fact that there's a ring missing for zoom doesn't bother me. Um, I do once in a while, when I'm manually focusing, I do like to have a ring for focus. So the nice thing is you can do this one ring for um, focus or zoom. So then you might be wondering, what do you do for iris? Well, there is a knob here on the bottom, let me switch hands here, that you, you can kind of see it there, you can, I think it's focused, that you can ad assign for that. So right off the bat, that is not a big deal to me. The fact that it's went from three rings to one. Would I have preferred them to stick with the three? Yeah, probably. It just. I really thought the build quality of the XF200 was perfect. The weight was almost perfect. I loved all the assignable buttons. So it's, I feel like Canon took a step backwards with the XF400 if you're comparing it to the XF200. Again, I feel this is more of a line of like an XA update, even though they're calling it an XF uh, series camera. That aside, um, really quick too, this does have the microphone holder. I just didn't attach it. This is literally right out of the box. Just a quick comparison. So again, one of the other differences here on the Panasonic, if you're going to do your viewfinder, it slides out here and it goes like that. Um, this is touch screen as well, but again, you have a lot more manual buttons here to use. It doesn't really rely a ton on your touch screen if you don't want it to. Where I was messing around with the menus here, and it is a lot of screen touching so it is going to get fingerprinted and you know again maybe that's just how things are changing the touch screen is nice but i would have preferred a few more physical buttons for certain things but i'll get into that when i start going over the menus and things like that so um, from the side very different a lot more physical buttons here than here. Again, when you open this up, you really have, let me pick it up. <clears throat> this is all you're really getting inside of the Canon. So if I were to turn it on the back, this is what you're looking at here. Um, this does not have the SDI out of the 405 but this does not have the SDI out, SDI out of the UX180, which is the same camera, then this minus that, I think one other function. So from the back, kind of looking at here, and this is a substantially larger battery too than this, and just a nice little touch, you can push the button on it and kind of see where you're at. Here, I, I wanna say that this is an XA series battery too, where the XF200 had a different battery, so, this is even, again, I'm pretty sure this is an XA battery, so no little dial on it to kind of check your status. You have to really rely on the LCD, what it's telling you. If we flip it over to this side, really nothing on this side besides your SD slots, which to open it, you just, um, I'm trying to see, oh, right here, you, you flip it, and you can get two cards in here. I will say two, uh, which was really nice. On the XF400, what they fixed that bothered me on my XF200 was you can do a really high bit rate in card A, but then card B would be like a lower bit rate for, I guess they would say for proxy or just internet, which I didn't like. If I'm filming a wedding or something, I like both to be filmed at the same bit rate, exactly the same as a, a really like a mirrored backup. Where on this one, it actually does it. I did put two cards in and it does do both exact recording formats on the cards at the same time, A and B, which is nice. So that was something that kind of worried me, but it's good. Um, the card slot on the Panasonic 
is right here. And I like it. I think it looks a little better. Um, excuse me with the dogs. And I kind of like this one better how it is. One second. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. Apologize for that. I don't know if the dog just start being goofy. So, back to the card slots. I really enjoy this better. It's just easier, I guess. I don't know. Like, having this switch here, sometimes I feel like it would, it could eventually break. I'm sure it's like spring-loaded and I don't know. I just, I really prefer this function of a little door like this. And it's not like you're going to hit it anyway and pull it out by accident. So, kind of like that better. Um, I do like that the audio settings as well are kind of built into here on the side of the camera. So you can make your adjustments and all that with your what you need here. Where on the Canon, if you let me turn it here, everything is kind of like on the, the classic, uh, you know, pull down off the detachable handle. Now, that's the other thing. This handle is detachable where the Panasonic one is not. That's built in, but I mean, geez, look at this thing. It's This is robust. This is a big handle where this is very tiny. But, you know, it makes me wonder if Canon is just going for a different market, what they want to do. This is very, definitely more portable. And again, you can remove this if you want to be incognito where you don't have to be so flashy. Where this one, if you walk in, like, okay, you look like you know what you're doing, you mean business. But that I, I did have an XA10 back in the day, and I did kind of miss this form factor. So again, I don't know if I'm going to keep this. I'd probably be surprised. I really have to see how the video quality is. Everything I've seen online, it looks really good, but... I really wanted to try it and see if it's something I'd want to keep because I did miss my XA10, but that's another video. Again, I'll have a ton of tests coming this week and the next week or so of some tests that I'm doing, but just a quick comparison. Um, one thing I do like to, let me close this on the Panasonic, is that both manufacturers got rid of the lens cap and they both do the lens hood there and on the um, on the Canon, it's right here. So, it takes a little more oomph to get that off open, but uh, so very nice. So, let me just look at these two from the top. Again, I know this is like a very quick comparison, but you can kind of see. I mean, I'm on my tippy toes, but you can see. Look at that. I mean, just is like <laughs> it's a little camera compared to the Panasonic. Um, even for the viewfinder, I guess if we're looking here, we're on the Canon. It's this little dinky thing. It does pull out and it rotates. But I mean, look at how, how small this eye cup is where on the Panasonic, it's like boom. I mean, it's, this does come off too. I don't know the DPI on each of these uh, viewfinders, but I mean, they, this... Canon one probably has got to be a little smaller to look through than the Panasonic, but I mean this. Look at this arm, like I mean, very nice. It doesn't have to pull out and up or anything like that. It just swings up and down. Um, I do like too the physical button of on the Panasonic, where you can have just your viewfinder, your LCD, or it can go back and forth with the sensor here, depending if you're in front of it. So I like that, and that's just a quick button right here. I haven't really messed with this so much. I'm assuming that with this it's one or the other, or maybe you could see both at the same time. I don't know yet if the viewfinders, if you look, if the viewfinder works with the LCD open. I will let you guys know as soon as I try it. I just this is just a quick overview and comparison between the two cameras. So just something to look into. But anyway, that's you know pretty much it. I know there's a lot of, I didn't want to do an unboxing on this, there's all those, there's a couple of those out already and I have some cameras I want to compare it to quality wise. I am excited to see, this is 4K 60p, it's got, a, I think it's 150 megabits per second. I, this one has a bunch of different bit rates for 4K and that's another thing, you know, if you wanted one camera does all future proof yourself, one other reason I would kind of lean more towards the Panasonic is this has true 4K, the 4096 by 
2160, where this is just a 3840 by 2160. So this is true 4K, this is Ultra HD, this also has Ultra HD as well. So that true 4K is at 4096 by 2160, 24P. This camera does not do that. This is just 3860 by 2140, no I'm sorry, 3840 by 2160, 60P, and I'm assuming 30P as well. So if you need to have all your codecs and bit rates and all that fancy stuff, this is one of the few cameras that actually has it and it's in the same price range as this one that just came out. But maybe they're targeting different markets, markets I don't know, but for me, if I'm gonna buy one camera, to kind of do it all and not upgrade this generation. I think I would, right now, I would say I'd lean towards the Panasonic. Um, they both have one inch sensors, and I know this Canon has two a new chips put in, dual chips for something or another. So, I know, just something simple too. This has 20 times zoom. I don't usually use digital zoom, this is optical. And this one is only 15, but I know it has a digital zoom as well, which I think brings it up to 30, but I think that's just in HD, because what it does is it crops in on the 4K sensor, so it brings you up to 30. But if you're just gonna film in 4K, I think you're stuck at 15 uh, times zoom. So anyway, just a quick over look overview between the two cameras, a little opinion here and there. I have not even filmed anything with this Canon, so I can't even speak on the quality of it. I literally just got it an hour ago. So I'm going to do some tests tonight and maybe get one of those videos up as well. I always like to do my little gain test, but I'm gonna do some testing with the dogs here and different lighting and things like that. And again, sorry about the tapping on the floor. It's just, it's what they, they're always by me. So don't have a professional studio to do some of these videos that I would like to have. So thank you for dealing with it. I will be back with more. Thank you.